What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to model the Daniel Libeskind's uh, iconic facade in Revit. So Daniel Libeskin has his own approach to making facades. They're not always uh, the same, but they usually look quite similar. Now, I had the opportunity to see uh, last summer one of his facades, the uh, Jewish Museum in Berlin. It's an amazing structure and the facade is really cool. Uh, now, I, I did that when I was visiting uh, that BIM girl. Uh, we had that Q whole Q&A and uh, a lot more. So if you're interested in that, uh, check it out uh, or search for it but anyways so I thought it would be cool to try to uh, model a facade like that those weird windows that look like slashes on the facade they look really cool so I thought how can we approach that in Revit and how can I create something like that in Revit so uh, that's what I'm going to be showing you in today's tutorial now before I get into that I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. And also I make uh, one Revit Advanced Balkan Architect course each week and those are available on my Patreon first link in the description of this video. There you can have uh, you can find in-depth courses on a numerous uh, beginner and advanced uh, Revit topics. So if that's something you're interested in, some in-depth learning, check that out. Also there you can find all of my Revit project files. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. Let's get started by going here to the Revit's homepage. I'm going to go here to Models and then to New. And for my template, I'm going to go with the st standard architectural template for this demonstration. So let me just choose that, hit OK here. And there we go, we have a new project opened up. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is just do a simple wall. So I'm going to go here to Walls, you can use the W a shortcut for walls and here let me choose one of the thicker walls maybe this generic 375 millimeter wall now I'm going to select it and just place a simple wall uh, just like this now when selected and let's go into 3d I'm going to adjust it just a little bit maybe extend it a bit more just so we can have a larger surface to work with now, once we have this regular wall, what you need to do is you need to place a curtain wall inside of this wall. So if I just go here back into level one, I can go here to wall and then let's go again to architectural wall and let's open up the drop menu. But here I'm going to choose the curtain wall and let's go with the storefront for now. And later on, I'm going to be talking about adjusting this and what should you choose. So let's go here to storefront and I'm going to click once here. Now let's flip it to the other side by hitting the space key. Now, as you can see, it's facing the south. Uh, here and let's just do a small segment now at this point you don't really have to worry about uh, how large this uh, curtain wall segment is you can do it however large you want so let's just place it there go into 3d and that basically looks like this so here if we select this we can adjust the height and here we can adjust the length uh, and those are the simple settings but what you can do to get that iconic uh, Daniel Libeskind facade with those iconic openings those slashes along the facade you select this curtain wall and then you go here into edit profile now once you're there here it outlines the basic profile of this existing wall which is just a simple rectangle down here on the bottom now you just do a simple cross selection and you delete that and then you can go here to the modified tools and you can create something a bit more, well, Libeskind ish. So I'm just going to go here with a simple line, maybe go like this. Then I'm going to go like that just to do, uh, just to complete this shape. Then you can go with something like, I don't know, like this. And then let's complete that shape. And then you can do a few more, maybe something like this. And then starting from here, let's go with something like that. Maybe we can move this a bit. There we go. So let's say we have here an interesting wall arrangement. And now you can just use some of the modified tools to kind of set this up a little bit better if that's what you want. So I'm going to go here with the split element tool. Uh, you can use the SL shortcut if that's what you prefer. So let's make some openings here or just some cuts here into this 
uh, into this wall, so maybe just like this, or into these lines. A few cuts here, and then you go with the trim and extend tool. Again, you can use the shortcut TR in this case. So just TR and just go like this. And there we go. So we're basically trimming and extending this so we can have uh, basically more complete shapes. So go like this. Now, okay, here this piece is missing. I guess I didn't trim and extend uh, a certain part of it. So let's go back here just like that. And then we can trim and extend here. There we go. And then these lines in the middle, we can delete those, just like this. And here we have a more interesting pattern, something that looks more like something that Libeskind would create. And once you're done with this, once you've created your outline or your shape, you just go here to finish, and there you go. So uh, Revit is going to give you this warning. It's basically saying that uh, uh, it has some wall mullions that have to be uh, deleted. So you just go to delete elements and there we go. So here, as you can see, we have an opening inside of this facade. Maybe if we turn on shadows, it will be uh, more visible. But there you go, we have an opening. And even here, if you look at the shadows, the shadows look kind of cool because of that uh, cool opening. Now, these uh, mullions and the whole grid will look kind kinda uh, weird. Uh, that's just because Revit by default adds the mullions vertically. So what you can do to make this uh, look a bit cleaner, you can go and select the curtain wall. So just come to the edge, hit the tab key if necessary to toggle selection and then make sure to select the curtain wall. So here in the properties, when it says curtain wall, uh, just open up the drop menu and you can set it up to the regular curtain wall. And here you'll get another warning. You just need to click delete uh, mullions or elements. And there we go. So now it's a clean opening and we have just clean glass. Now, if you want to add mullions that will follow this shape, it's really difficult, but I do have a workaround or a solution that can fix this in a way. And I'm going to be talking about that a bit later on. But for now, let's see how we get that iconic, uh, iconic metal uh, folded metal facade look. And after that, I'll show you how to add the mullions. So for that, uh, folded metal facade, what you need to do is you need to select your wall, the exterior wall, and then go here into edit type. Now, once here, let's duplicate this and let's call this one Libeskind wall. hit enter. So we have a new wall. I'm going to go here into edit. Now uh, the, the main structure, I'm just going to leave it as is. Maybe change the material to concrete, for example. And let's go with cast in place gray concrete, hit OK, and there we go. Now I'm going to uh, select this core boundary and insert a new layer. And this will be the finish layer. And let's make it uh, 20 millimeters or two centimeters, just like that. Or maybe even go with 30. Yeah, let's go with 30. And here for the material, it has to be some sort of a metal material. So let's go with metal and uh, let's see, metal deck, OK. Let's go to appearance. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, this is something that kind of resembles a Libeskind's uh, look. Now, if you want to see how this material would look like on a wall surface, what you can always do is uh, go here to the uh, select thumbnail, thumbnail shape and go here to scene. And then here you can find walls. And there you go. So as you can see, this looks maybe a bit more like one of those facades that they've shown you in the beginning of this tutorial. So let's select this one and go OK. And let's go OK, okay again. OK again. There we go. Now uh, let's go back into level one just to see uh, is this facing the right uh, direction. So let's uh, go here and change the, uh, the detail level from coarse into fine. And there we go. So as you can see, the facade or the finish layer is on the wrong side. So let's just flip it to the other side by using these flip grips. Now it's facing the south and that's what we want. Now if we go into 3D, here we have that uh, metal facade on front. Now to add those separations between elements, what you can do is you can create wall reveals. But here if I go to wall, open up the drop menu, go to wall reveal and let's go with the vertical ones as that's what Libeskind uses. If I place one here and then go to modify, you're going to notice that it's way too large. So let's uh, create a smaller reveal profile. If we go here into edit type, 
you can see that here we don't really have many layers or many profile options so let's cancel out of this and let's create our own uh, profile so what I'm going to be doing for that is just go here to file a uh, new and then start a new family here I'm going to scroll all the way down to find a uh, metric profiles and here we have metric profile reveal now you need to uh, go here and hit open and here basically it's saying that this is a wall face and this is the wall so we need to cut into a wall so let's just go with simple lines and a simple rectangle and just go like this and that's it so now for this reveal as you remember our wall is like uh, it's 30 millimeters so let's say our reveal should be 20 by 20 so that's 10 uh, millimeters on each side making it a total of 20 here and here let's go with 20 as well there we go so this is maybe a reveal that's a bit better for this project you can even go ahead like this and select two of these edges and then here you can extend it a little bit so let's add five millimeters here and five here so basically hold the control until you get that little plus sign next to your cursor and then you click once for this one once for this one then you select the edge and you just drag it over Let's go with five millimeters. There we go. Maybe this trapezoid reveal would suit our facade even better. Now, first, before even loading your families in, what I always suggest is you go here to uh, uh, to save, and then let's save this, and let's save it to desktop, and let's call this one uh, Liebeskind Reveal Family, or uh, just Liebeskind Reveal Profile. Now this profile family will be up on my Patreon, first link in the description, so if you want to just download it without making it, you can do it there. Okay, so let's now load this into the project and we can immediately close it. So let's just do that. There we go. Now we can select this existing reveal that we have created, go into edit type and then just change the profile to Libeskind reveal profile. Select that, hit apply, OK. And there we go. So here we have that profile and that looks w way more appropriate. So now we can move it all the way here to one of the uh, one edge and then let's go to uh, to the array tool and then let's go to last or yeah, let's go to last and let's do I don't know like 100. Now you select this thing and then you drag it all the way to the other side, maybe here. And let's see what that looks like. Now uh, Revit might start lagging just a little bit because it's uh, quite a complex task that we're asking it to do but don't worry let's just wait for a second and then hopefully uh, we'll get a solution or it will uh, manage to finish this task. Okay, so after waiting for a few more seconds, we have our array done. So now you can stretch it even further uh, just to maybe make the distances between these uh, reveals a bit larger. So let's go like that. You can even just go, uh, you can select it, go here to move, and then you can move it all the way to the other edge of this wall. So let's place it there. There we go, so uh, I think this looks okay now. So this is what it looks in the plan view and let's go into 3D and there we go. We have that iconic Libeskind facade and now if I just turn this to realistic, there we go, I think this looks really cool. We have those openings here and we have, uh, we have the reveals uh, that make it look like that facade. It looks like that ugly steel and we have openings for our uh, curtain wall facade and we even have these mullions on the edges but not going alongside of this facade. Now, I promised in the beginning of this uh, tutorial or when I started modeling this in Revit that I'll show you how you can you add mullions. So it's a bit difficult, but what you can do is you can go here to curtain grid. So you basically first have to add a curtain grid uh, and then you add a uh, mullion to that. So you just go here to curtain grid and then you can do one segment. So you just kind of hover over the edge of this wall and then you can just place that uh, segment. So you just go like this and then you place a segment and there you go. So we have a grid over here. Now this is just the vertical grid. So what you can do is select the whole uh, 
just like get to the edge and try to select the whole curtain wall and then here in the properties if we scroll down just a little bit here we have the uh, uh, let's maybe expand it a bit okay so here we have the vertical grid and the horizontal grid and you can actually set up an angle so here uh, this is the vertical part so let's give it an angle of I don't know like 15 degrees and there you go so it kind of uh, just uh, spins around a little bit so we can do it maybe even 30 so just like that so you can play around with this uh, curtain grid oops I have moved it a little bit so you can play around with this uh, curtain grid and then uh, what you can do is you can try to adjust it to the angle of uh, this these here openings so if you absolutely necessarily have to have mullions this is how you would approach it so you would select uh, the whole curtain wall so you just come to the edge there we go, whole curtain wall, and then here you would uh, adjust the angles for the vertical and the horizontal grid, and then you would add these grid lines, and after you're done with that, you can just adjust mullions to that, so let's cancel out of this, there we go, so you can place mullions at an angle, but it's really difficult to set up properly, but if you take the extra time, you can uh, make something that resembles that uh, Libeskin project, but of course this will take a bit more time. Anyways, so that covers how you do these uh, Libeskind facades in Revit. I hope this was exciting and I hope I have shown you something new in Revit and hopefully you will be able to use this in maybe some of your future projects or just be inspired by this shape to use it for maybe a different purpose and make something even more interesting than this. Okay, so that covers this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Uh, and if you want to download all of my project files like this file, or if you want some of those advanced uh, Balkan Architect courses where I go in depth uh, into some of the advanced Revit topics and make these complex tutorials or courses that are all over one hour long, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, like and share this video and if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.